If you only know Jackie Chan as a goofy martial arts comedian from the Rush Hour and Shanghai Noon series, then consider this a wake-up call. Because when Jackie did things his way on his home turf, he churned out some of the most brutal, gritty ballet of violence ever to be seen. Stemming from his big brother in Peking opera, Sammo Hung, Sammo's amazing career in stunts brought forth the performance art of weapons form, mixing in random props along with some actual contact on hits. Jackie was able to follow in Sammo's footsteps and make a name for himself with his own brand of athletics. Then Jackie would turn the volume up to 11 by adding in some daredevil stunts. Many would point to Drunken Master 2 as Jackie's magnum opus, and that is an all-timer, but for an example of his best modern-day martial arts action, mixed in with some crime drama and his signature comedy, one of his absolute best outings is 1985's Police Story. And... Action! <laughs> In the 1970s, Jackie Chan soared to fame internationally once he was finally able to break out of the shadow of Bruce Lee. When Chan had started getting starring roles at the beginning of his career, martial arts cinema was in the middle of a Bruceploitation phase, where imitators were used and promoted to be Bruce Lee in a shameless copycat manner. Unfortunately for Jackie, he was forced into the same kind of roles, even casting him in the sequel to Lee's Fist of Fury titled New Fist of Fury. He played the brother to Lee's character. It was an obvious misstep. When Jackie was finally able to do his own style, mixing in his biggest influences like Buster Keaton and Harold Lloyd, he took the world by storm and well, the rest is history. It seems like the best of Jackie usually came after tone-deaf producers tried to make him into something he's not. More on that later. When Police Story came around, it would not be his first non-period martial arts film, but it would be one that felt very contemporary in 1985 Hong Kong cinema. Jackie would play a character named Chen Ka Kui in the original Chinese version, but in the international versions, he's known as Kevin Chan. Casual fans might know this character from Supercop released in America by Dimension Films, but this movie is where it all originated since Supercop is actually Police Story 3 Supercop. Just bear with me. Chan is a Hong Kong cop who is part of an elite task force that's assigned to fight organized crime. Right off the bat, as the opening credits end, we're thrust right into the case. The Big Sting operation introduces us to the key characters. The boss, Chu, has many business ventures but is bleeding money, so he's turned to drug dealing and always has his nephew Danny handling his dirty work. He also has a newly appointed secretary, Selena Fong, played by Bridget Lin. The undercover sting is immaculately planned and many officers have a detailed role in a shantytown village where a big deal is about to go down. It all goes to shit, and the police find themselves in a gunfight in the middle of the village. Chan takes the initiative to go after the fleeing suspects, and what follows is one of the most iconic chases ever put to celluloid. What first transpires is a car chase through the shantytown village, and when I say through, I mean straight through. Each car cuts through buildings demolishing everything down the hill. Again, this scene may look familiar to casual audiences. More on that later. Chan eventually loses his car, as would Chu and his men. Then they would go on to hijack a bus, and Chan would chase it down on foot. The second iconic part of this sequence is when Chan catches up and hooks himself onto the bus. He hangs on for dear life as he tries to avoid cars and ward off the attackers. Chan gets kicked away, and the third iconic part happens when he takes a shortcut through a hill, cuts the bus off down the road, and plays chicken with the driver. It all culminates in one of the most dangerous stunts. The bus stops just before Chan and hurls the criminals out of the front windows. As Chan finally apprehends Chu and his cohorts, his superiors decide to release his secretary Selena in an attempt to get a solid case out of her. 
They assign Chan to protect her from any attempts on her life from Chu to keep her silent. However, Selena keeps refusing Chan's security at every turn. In a hilarious sequence of classic Jackie humor, Chan has one of his fellow officers pose as a killer trying to off Selena while he fakes an attempt to rescue her. It more or less goes smoothly. But it works, as Selena now sticks by Chan's side seeking his protection. And not a moment too soon. They get ambushed for real when Chu sends a gang of goons to kill both Chan and Selena. It's not a long fight, but what Jackie's able to do with the sequence located in between two crashed cars really shows off his creativity. The two more stun guys up there and go through another two window. One stun guy hit here, another second guy hit here, hit the hood. The stun guy tried to go, but the, the car going back. So all that's kind of lost the balance. I know something going on, but I still have to finish the whole shot. They escape with their lives, and Selena goes into protective custody at Chan's apartment. Here, we're introduced to a staple of the franchise where Chan's work always conflicts with his relationship with his girlfriend, May, played by Maggie Chung. Poor May always seems to catch Chan in the most inopportune times, as she sees him with Selena still sporting her sexy negligee. Chan gets a birthday cake to the face, and in a bit of gratuitous posturing, Chan shows off his bare ass when getting cleaned up. Although, if you're an action star in the 80s, it's just in your contract to show off your finely tuned butt. I'm just taking one of those unmotivated butt in the moonbeam walks. Eventually, Chu gets his freedom. And with all the trouble that the police had put him through, he puts Chan's super cop through the ringer, framing him for murder. The last act of the movie has Jackie playing things rather seriously. He rarely makes any jokes, and his character is out for justice. This sets up one of the greatest finales of his entire career. Selena goes on the run with a briefcase full of evidence of Chu's dealings. She seeks refuge at a mall. Chu, his nephew Danny, and his many henchmen chase her down. Chan catches up and fights with all of them in one of the most brutal finales in action movie history. You get kind of the signature Jackie Chan prop fighting, except here it's not played for laughs, it's played for violence. So much glass is broken during this sequence, Jackie has said the crew started calling the movie Glass Story during filming. And the whole scene gets capped off with one of Jackie's most dangerous stunts ever, where he slides down a four-story pole lit up with decorative lights and falls into a children's playhouse. This scene alone is what made me a fan of his. It's pure, unadulterated fighting at its best. It's also a best example of what separates Jackie from the other action stars who fight multiple attackers at once. In most action movies, especially martial arts films, the enemies usually come at the hero one at a time, almost like they're taking turns, while the others seem to wait. Here, Chan gets attacked from every direction at once, and can barely keep up with fending off every attacker. Police Story was spawned from Jackie making his second attempt at breaking through to the American market. His first attempt was the 1980 film Battle Creek Brawl. Jackie clashed with the director of that film, Robert Klaus, director of Enter the Dragon and real action classic China O'Brien. He hated how they specifically brought him over to the States based on his Hong Kong film work, but never let him control his action sequences. The same thing would happen with his second attempt the 1985 film The Protector, which co-starred Danny Aiello. With this one, they tried to make him too much like a tough New York cop like Clint Eastwood, 
and gave them tough guy lines with uncharacteristic profanity. Get the hell out of here! What are you doing? Give me the fucking keys. This one falls into the lower echelon of 80s action movies. He was again not in control of his action scenes and felt they'd left no room for his creativity and were rather dull. Before Jackie even premiered The Protector in Hong Kong, he actually reshot the fights to his own satisfaction. and filmed an entire subplot not present in the American version. The only thing Jackie gives the Protector credit for is giving him the inspiration for Police Story. Whereas Jackie had played cops before, Police Story was the best of both worlds. There would be a gritty crime story that involved political red tape of the Hong Kong police force, along with a more grounded villain mixed with some of the humorous situations that Jackie likes to weave into his movies. Not only did Police Story change the face of Hong Kong action cinema, but its influence is evident in Hollywood films. In 1989's Tango and Cash, Stallone gives a shout-out to Jackie with a sequence in the beginning that's nearly a shot-for-shot -shot recreation of the bus stunt. complete with the criminals getting launched through the windshield. Then, in 1992's Rapid Fire, Brandon Lee was a professed fan of Jackie's, and used the stunt where he rams a guy with a motorcycle right through multiple panes of glass. In 2003, Michael Bay used the entire Shantytown Hill sequence in Bad Boys 2. Again, nearly shot for shot. Jackie would follow up Police Story with 1988's Police Story 2. A worthy follow up that ultimately doesn't surpass the first, but it does have some stellar action as well. There's a particularly good fight at a children's playground, where Jackie's creativity really takes advantage of the location. Then, 1992 saw Chan team up with Michelle Yeoh for Police Story 3 Super Cup. This film would veer more towards Rambo-like gunplay and explosions than Chan's usual fighting, but the stunts are as dangerous as ever as Jackie hangs from a helicopter, and Michelle Yeoh matches the insanity with her own stunts. In the last entry of the first era of police story movies, we get Police Story 4 First Strike. Chan is working as a spy in sort of a James Bond type adventure. This installment is pretty far removed from the rest and might as well have been its own movie, which New Line released it as, titled Jackie Chan's First Strike in 1996. Jackie would eventually come back to the brand name two more times with a standalone reboot called New Police Story. In this, Jackie got rid of the comedy entirely and wanted to show off his dramatic skills, as he played a tortured cop who got his team killed by ex-game rich kid criminals led by Daniel Wu of AMC's Into the Badlands. Chan would do another reboot with Police Story 2013, it would again be a more dramatic film for Jackie, and unfortunately, the film gets severely bogged down by epileptic editing and nauseating shaky cam. The less said, the better. With the amount of blood, sweat, and tears that went into making this movie, it's only right that we paid tribute. Police Story gets 9 out of 10 Stallones. <laughs>